how old were you during Vietnam? I was uh, the the American involvement in Vietnam started in 1965 officially when the Marines landed uh, in North North Vietnam. Well, Da Nang, and I was 15 at the time. When the war escalated, I was 17, graduating high school. Uh, where did you live during the time of the Vietnam era? I lived in Philadelphia uh, in a working class neighborhood called Port Richmond. Did you support or oppose American involvement in the war? And if so, how did you show this support or opposition? In the beginning when I was in high school, um, it, in the neighborhood that I was in, <clears throat> it was uncomfortable not to support the war. Um, in fact, I was second string on my high school basketball team, and this is sort of humorous, but the basketball team, most of the guys in the basketball team decided that if we all went into the Vietnam War together as the basketball team, they would make a movie about us. That's how frivolous a lot of the feelings were. How old were you during the draft? Did you have to evade the draft, or were you just not drafted at all? I, I, I evaded the draft. I belonged to a, a group called Resistance, and what we did is we counseled draft resistors and helped get them out of the country, uh, to Canada, to uh, Sweden, Switzerland, Sweden. Um, and... Uh, I burned my draft card, so I resisted. But the, the problem the problem is is that the government through the FBI uh, the FBI and and uh, the Office of, of Secret Service that it wasn't called that was the CIA, but the government agencies really had their hands full trying to keep track of everybody. So the only people they went after in terms of dodging the draft were high profile people like the Chicago 8 and uh, other other people but a lot of the draft resistors were also involved in the civil rights movement and other movements so it was really easy to lay low to to do what you wanted to do to get involved in trying to create change and yet at the same time not have secret agents show how did music influence the time period? Well, it's, it's going to be a long answer. Yeah. I was 10 years old when the 60s started, and I was 20 when it ended. Now, you can, and musically, you can break the 60s up into two halves. You can break it up into the post-Payola era, which was a scandal that broke through radio where disc jockeys were taking money to play records and create hits from records. And the government cracked down on that. And, um, and then the music af after that, um, until the Beatles came to America, was dance music, the twist, the mashed potatoes, the locomotion, all that stuff. Uh, uh, mostly coming out of Philadelphia. Then... The Beach Boys from California, and then Motown from Chicago. So uh, that was that was sort of dance, street music, and it had nothing to do with politics. It had nothing, although the Beach Boys sometimes would sing a political song. Here. Then the Beatles came and the British Invasion came, and the Beatles eventually changed things in 1966 and 67, they, they, that music was what created the counterculture which became the love generation or the hippies. And then from then on, you had a country that was confused. Real hippies were altruistic people. They cared about, they wanted to live alternative styles. They wanted to live in communes, they didn't want to watch TV, they wanted to do drugs, they wanted to eat healthfully, and stuff like that. Pseudo-hippies were, were people that would dress like hippies, but do bad things like Charles Manson, 
and the Manson family and the murders uh, of Sharon Tate and those people. And, and then there were people that saw the hippies as a threat to the American way. Those were later became, they were called rednecks, and they became very violent, and they would beat and kill hippies and stuff like that. But the music was, was involved with the culture, the hippies, and, and the political culture after 1966. Through 1965, it was the Four Seasons. It was all pop music, pop-related music, dance music, and really didn't inspire anything except good times. Mm -hmm. So music after 1966 not only became an integral part of the movement, but inspired the movement. The mm -hmm. Beatles, the Rolling Stones, stuff like that. Were you involved in any demonstrations? All the time. All the time. From Washington, um, uh, for civil rights, the March on Washington uh, against the war, uh, anti-war protests around City Hall and at JFK Plaza. Um, I later became involved with a corporate organization called SANE. And what we would do is we would show up at these political dinners and we would give speeches and show films from the Vietnam War that came from the North Vietnamese down through Canada. And when the people at these dinners saw the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, what they were doing to Americans, they would like, they would like want to shoot us and kill us. But the point of us doing that was to say, look, this, is, <laughs> this, this isn't a, a walk in the park and we shouldn't be there in the first place. The French were over there, they got beat and they told us, don't go because it's impossible. We went in anyway because we were arrogant and we got 55, 56,000 soldiers you killed. Know. Father Phil was in the Korean War for a long time. He, he saw, he, he, when he went to sleep at night, he would moan in his sleep. He had delayed stress syndrome. He couldn't sleep most nights. He would grit his teeth. He saw stuff, you know, and when he saw that I was thinking about going in the Marines, he t sat me down and he said, well, Vietnam isn't anything but Korea with trees. In Korea, we needed rifles. We got them, but we didn't get any ammunition. We needed cannons. We got cannons without any shells. We needed uniforms because it was frozen in Canada, and they sent us these wool coats that weren't worth a damn. He said they didn't care about us. They just wanted us to do what they wanted us to do while they were negotiating with North Korea to get them out of South Korea. So when he said that to me, that, that changed. How uh, has the Vietnam War era affected your life today? <clears throat> well, it, it took my choice of what I wanted to do with my life and trashed it. Because instead of going to Vietnam, I had to do what was called alternative service. So from 1970 to 1979, I worked in what was called alternative service. I worked in community mental health, meaning that instead of going over and fighting with people that I had no right or reason to be fighting with and killing, I worked with the disadvantaged and the mentally ill as an alternative to doing that. So that took 10 years of my life and trashed it. Mm -hmm.